The air conditioner. It harnesses the characteristics of a very special fluid to cool the air around us. When this fluid passes from a liquid state to a gaseous state, it absorbs a phenomenal quantity of heat. And when it becomes liquid again, it releases this heat. In fact, to cool a room, the air conditioner captures the heat inside and expels it outside, thanks to a fluid's change of state. Housed in this heavy-duty box are everything the air conditioner needs to take on the heat and chill the air. The air conditioner sits partly inside and partly outside the house. Serpentine metal coils traverse both sides. They're filled with the magic ingredient, refrigerant. Refrigerants are a mix of hydrofluorocarbons, chemicals that easily go from being liquid to gas and absorb lots of heat while doing so. How? Time to open it up and find out. At the indoor end of the unit, a fan pulls in air from the room. The heat in the air is transferred to the refrigerant inside the coil. The heat deprived air then gets blown back into the room. But it's much cooler. Simple enough. Hot air comes in and chills out as it blows across the frigid coils then back into the room. But where does all the heat go? And how the heck does the refrigerant keep chilling even on the hottest days? The key is phase transition. At the entrance of the evaporator coil that cools the incoming air, the refrigerant is in its liquid form at 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Because it's colder than the air from the room, it grabs a bit of heat out of it. But the refrigerant's ability to transition easily from liquid to gas will soon allow it to absorb way more heat. As it absorbs heat from the air, its temperature goes up by a few degrees, just enough for it to evaporate and become a gas. Evaporation makes it absorb a lot more heat. Now it needs to get rid of all that heat. Enter the compressor, this black cylinder that makes all the noise when the air conditioner is turned on. It's this motor that pumps the refrigerant through the coils. As the compressor spins at 3500 RPM, the refrigerant winds its way through the cylinder. The compressor compresses the gas. It is forcibly squeezed, boosting its temperature. The tiny hydrofluorocarbonicules get closer and closer to each other and heat up as friction between them increases. By the time the refrigerant exits the compressor, it's under high pressure and extremely hot at 150 degrees Fahrenheit. It enters the condenser coil that's surrounded by warm air outside. Warm, but not as hot as the so-called refrigerant. Since heat always transfers from hotter to less hot, the refrigerant, which is hotter, transfers its excess heat to the air. As it winds around the condenser coil, the refrigerant loses enough heat to condense, becoming liquid again. This condensation process releases even more heat into the air. Once again, the refrigerant has undergone a phase transition, but this time in order to release tons of heat. When the liquid reaches the expansion valve, the pressure eases up. With more room to move, there's less friction between the molecules, and the refrigerant regains its refrigerant properties. Now, at 35 degrees Fahrenheit, it's ready to start the cool cycle again. Even on the hottest day of the year, the air conditioner can chill out. It takes the heat from inside and dumps it outside. That's because it's a phase transition specialist. A simple switch from liquid to gas allows the air conditioner to take the heat. And that's what makes it so cool.